Hi everyone, my name is Michael Murphy. I'm a research biochemist and biologist in Cambridge in the UK. Now, I've been involved in MitoQ for many years now. So, myself and Rob Smith developed this when I was in the University of Otago in Dunedin in New Zealand back in the late 1990s. Since then, it's gone on to be developed and tested in many animal models, and now, as you know, many uh, people are taking it as a supplement. The role of it in MS is particularly intriguing. What we know so far is that MitoQ is designed to go into mitochondria, and it accumulates in mitochondria because they kind of use electricity to give them a negative charge inside, and the MitoQ is designed to be sucked inside the mitochondria. Inside there, it can mop up some of the free radicals being produced. So its first role we designed it was that it should decrease damage to mitochondria by free radicals. And we thought this would be involved in a lot of different aspects of human diseases because the free radical damage to mitochondria means that mitochondria aren't working so well. Well, why is that important? Well, mitochondria are where you burn your food with oxygen to make energy available for the rest of the cell to do its work. So obviously if your mitochondria aren't working well, you're running out of energy, your brain and your muscles aren't going to work so well. So generally we thought this would be something that would be applicable to a whole range of different disorders. Now it turns out that it does apply to many different types of diseases, all sorts of things from diabetes to heart attack, stroke, all of which have the common aspect of mitochondrial damage. Now, since patients have started being taking MitoQ or self-medicating with MitoQ for MS, there is some background work in animal models suggesting that it does decrease some of the damage to neurons that occurs in animal models of MS. This could occur by preventing some of the free radicals in the, neur in the neurons which are, being, which are disrupting neuronal function. And that means that the damage might be less, so less damage is occurring. But Perhaps more intriguingly, we have a lot of evidence now that the processes that cause the body to attack itself in MS, what we call in an inflammatory response, so you're used to having an inflammatory response if you get a cut or, some, or you get an injury or a bruise, lots of white cells will come in and start attacking the bacteria or the damaged tissue and restoring that. In simple terms in MS, some of those white cells are overreacting they're attacking our own nerves. What we found is that the signals that activate the white cells to attack also seem to involve mitochondrial free radicals in ways that we don't fully understand yet. So it seems likely that MitoQ is also affecting the ability of the immune system, the white cells in our bodies, to attack the neurons in an MS patient. So those are very interesting aspects that we think, two aspects that's protecting the nerves and it might be damping down or lessening the attacking response of the white cells in the patients. Now, do we have strong evidence for this? Well, not directly in MS patients at the moment. Mouse models are supportive of all of this, and the evidence in the mouse models is that we are getting some protection. But of course, until we actually do a proper double-blind control in MS patients, so the patients don't know whether they're taking mitocure or placebo, and the doctors don't know what they're doing, we can't say for sure. The placebo effect is very strong and we need to be sure through a proper independent clinical trial that MitoQ is actually working in MS patients. So that's something that would be very good to, to bring on as soon as we possibly can because of the anecdotal evidence that people are reporting. In the future, of course, the, the, we're using MitoQ in many different disorders and we're very interested in how it might damp down some of the damage that's occurring with aging. So, for example, the National Institutes of Aging in the United States, they're testing MitoQ in mice as they get older. Here they let hundreds of mice just age naturally with or without additions of various compounds and one they're testing is MitoQ. This will be interesting to see how the white cells, how the immune system alters with age and does MitoQ alter this in a beneficial way. So hopefully what you'll be able to take from this is that there's very interesting preliminary data and very interesting anecdotal reports with MitoQ in MS. Until we have a proper clinical trial, we won't know for sure if it's just uh, a placebo effect or a real effect. Hopefully it will be a real effect, but only time will tell. And in the meantime, basic research is suggesting that it may be a, 
uh, intervening in aspects of, of MS in a few different ways. And this is telling us something about other ways that we might develop other new therapies to target these processes in MS. Because we're only just beginning to understand the role of mitochondria in activating white cells in the immune system. And that's an area I think is going to be very interesting for other future therapies that will, will take us beyond MitoQ and into the future. And hopefully we'll have some therapies that can damp down both the damage caused in MS and also the immune system activation that underlies the disease.